Good morning. Welcome to our book study series. This is the first part of a seven series book study based sa ating material na The Secret to Saving and Building Your Future, Become Your Own Financial Educator by IMG. Ito po si Bad Sublena, one of the financial educators and trainers sa IMG Wealth Academy. I also teach part-time in one of the schools in Laguna. I handle financial literacy subjects. And incidentally, isa rin po akong certified security specialist ng Philippine Stock Exchange. Although I do not work there, uh, certified lamang nila ako. Okay, so let's start. We begin with lesson one, introduction to financial literacy. Sa usapang financial literacy, the first step that we introduce is the word cash flow. Again, cash flow. So ano ba yung cash flow? And what what do we need to do with it? We need to increase it. Particularly, kailangan pataasin yung cash flow na tinatawag. So what is cash flow? Sabi nung iba, daloy daw ng pera. Well, tama din because... Uh, daloy kasi may daloy papasok at saka may daloy palabas. So yung daloy papasok is what we call the income stream o yung sahod galing sa trabaho o sa negosyo or both. Yung namang daloy palabas, the outward stream is the expenses, yung mga gastusin. So the difference between income and expenses will give you cash flow. Okay. So, think about this. How much is your income every month? Ilang sources sa nang gagaling? One, two, three. Then compare that with how much are you spending or how much are your monthly expenses based on your monthly budget if you prepare a budget at all. Again, uh, we got to increase cash flow. That's the target. Yun yung ating game plan. And uh, usually, madaling sabihin, madaling pag-aralan. Kaya lang, sa totoong buhay, hindi ganun kadaling gawin. Although it's doable, of course. So sabi nga, it's not what you earn that counts, it's what you keep. Let's take this for example. So someone, a breadwinner, earning 50,000 a month, okay na sana, kaya lang, the monthly expenses, 55,000. So 50,000 minus 55,000 will give you a net cash flow na negative 5,000. So, may problema o wala? Meron. Kasi what does this mean? This means that this person is in debt. Di ba? Kasi may expenses, 55,000, kaya lang kulang yung sinasahod. Most probably coming from one stream of income only. So, para mapag, to make ends meet, so kailangan niya manghiram. And if this, of course, month in, month out, ay di may problema. Hindi na nga nakakaipon, nag accumulate pa o lumalaki yung utang. And what we want to do with our excess cash, our money, is to invest it. Diba? To invest it strategically in legal investment vehicles. But, problem is, you can start investing only if positive yung iyong cash flow. Tama. That's why we need to increase it. Hindi pwedeng negative. Mahirap mag-invest pag negative ang cash flow. Dapat positive. So to increase cash flow para maging positive, logically there are two ways. Since dalawa lang naman yung factors, income and expenses, so what do you do with the income? Patataasin mo, dadagdagan, or maximize. At the same time, kasabay dapat nun, i-minimize mo expenses. Ibig sabihin, babawasan mo. So, how do you increase cash flow? Dagdagan ng income, either from a job or a business or both. At the same time, bawasan ng expenses or magtipid. Tama po. So, let's take a look at an example. So, sa soft drinks, mahilig ka bang mag soft drinks? Let's say... The cost of a can of soda is 20 pesos and you consume two cans a day. So meaning that's 
in a month, that's 1,200. Now, let's say, pwede ka pa rin mag soft drinks. Pero ang gagawin natin, yung 200, yun na lang yung budget mo pang soft drinks. Then yung 1,000, isesave natin. Then let's see what happens. So yung 1,000, again, you'll save it. Sabi ng iba, mahirap mag-save ng 1,000. Pero if you take a look at it at a different perspective, di ba yung 1,000 a month is around 33 pesos per day. So kaya mo mo mag-save ng 33 pesos a day? If yes, ganun din yun. Uh, it's the same as saving 1,000 every month. And if you know an investment vehicle, if you want, if you know how to invest, the right way in a legal investment vehicle, let's say 12% per year. So this is what can happen. After 20 years, yung 1,000 per month mo, or yung 33 pesos per day, halos 1 million na, di ba? At to be exact, it's 911,000. 20 years from now. Sabi ng iba, matagal, kaya lang, di ba galing lang naman yan sa pagtitipid mo ng soft drinks, di ba? So let's extend the projection. After 35 years, yung 1,000 a month or 33 pesos per day, 6 million na. Di ba? So may 6 million ka na nadagdag bukod pa dun sa naipon mo talaga or kung retirement money. Bukod pa dun sa ibibigay ng company mo as your retirement pay. Pwede na? O pwede na kaysa 6 million kaysa sakit. Di ba? So, nakaipon ka na, nakaiwas ka pa sa sakit. So, take note, here's the lesson. Small change is big money. Hindi mo kailangang malakihan agad. Pwede sa maliit na halaga o sa maliit na hakbang, diyan ka magsimula. Yan. At alam natin, Hindi lang naman dyan galing ang ating mga excess expenses. Bukod sa soft drinks, uh, masanay din tayong bumili o mag-consume ng mahal na kape. Diba? Hindi nga lang kape. Ngayon, nadadagdagan pa yung trend. Uso na rin pati yung milk tea. Sabi ng iba, mahirap mag-save ng 33 pesos a day. Pero nakita mo, nag-milk tea every day which is around 80 or 100 pesos. So, madali para sa kanila. Pero yung mag-save, mahirap daw. Okay? Dining outside, uh, wala namang masama. Pero too much dining outside, yan ang isa sa mga pinakamalakas makaubos ng ating budget. So, ngayon nga, hindi lang mga fast food, di ba? Dati, Jollibee, McDo, KFC, Chow King lang. Pero ngayon, meron ng eat all you can, di ba? Yung sangyuk. So, kada sweldo, saan tayo? Sangyuk, di ba? Araw-araw, uh, milk tea. So, nauubos yung savings sa milk tea. Pag sumweldo, mag-sambio. O kaya, nagyayaya ang manood ng sine. Diba? Nothing wrong, but uh, make sure to provide for the basics first. Okay? Lunch at the office or sa school. Pwede naman magbalot. So, mga katipid sana. Branded, too much of the branded items. Sa halip na yung simple lang. Pero, na quality, high quality pa rin naman. Tsaka, maganda at masarap yung suot, eh di mas makakatipid ka. So, for sodas, magtubig ka na lang, mas healthy option pa. Sa halip na mamahaling coffee, 3 in 1, o yung co free co coffee sa office, sa halip na too much dining outside, eh di umuwi ka na mas mahaga. O kaya magbalot ka, di ba? Pag lunch. And, uh, simple ano, simplify your lifestyle. Not too flashy, para makakaipon ka. Okay, so, sabi ng iba, eh, kung konti naman ang naiipon, pa 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 lang. Okay, kaya lang, what they don't see is the potential when you learn to invest it properly. So, yung pakunti-kunti na savings na yan, after 15 years, pag samasamahin mo, you invest it at a legal investment rate, let's say, 12% average interest rate per annum or rate of return, so, after 15 years, I think 6 million na yan, di ba? After 15 years, galing lang sa pagtitipid mo sa mga bagay na yan, you save, and then you invest the right way. 
15 years. After 35 years, bata ka pa naman. So, mahaba pa ang investment horizon. So, after 35 years, assuming the same uh, average rate of return, 12% per annum or per year, so, mas malaki. Magiging 70.4 million. So, yun ang income potential. So, kung nakikita mo yan, it will be a strong enough reason para kailangan ko palang mag-save. Kasi hindi lang ako nakakaipon, kundi eventually, if I have enough savings, I can participate in some strategic investments. That could be millions years from now. Diba? And take note, hindi po yan uh, obnoxious projections, kundi mathematical calculations po yan. So what do we mean? What do I mean? It means that pag ginawa mo yan, ay talagang mangyayari. So gawin mo yan, the computations will hold, mag apply yan, it will become true. So mangyayari ito, value na ito. Okay? So nakikita niyo po, counting savings lang, it could go a long way. So the key is save to invest. Don't save to spend. Well, of course you have to spend. You need to spend. You'll spend it eventually. Pero have a goal para you allow some time for money to compound para mas strategic ang buying power niya. So save to invest. Part 1 is save. Then pag may enough savings ka na, you invest strategically. Save, then invest. Okay? Nakakasunod po po. And so, again, you don't need to start big. Pwedeng pa barya-barya. Pa konti-konti, it could go a long way. Konting disiplina lang, di, malayo ang mararating. Di ba, sabi nga ng isang commercial ng fast food, barya manin, di ba? Ang ina-encourage nila, kung may barya ka, makakakain ka rin sa fast food. Eh, kung balik ka rin natin, di ba, sa pabarya-barya, makakapag-invest ka rin. Di ba? So remember, simply saving is not enough. Again, simply saving is not enough. You got to save and invest. You got to save and then invest. So before we proceed to investments, ano nga ba yung investment sa palagay mo? Pwede mong i-google, pwede kang mag-search, magtanong sa mga nag invest Pero ikaw, ano sa palagay mong investment? How do you consider something as an investment? Ayan, towards the end of our book study, particularly dun sa part 6 and part 7 or lesson 6 and 7, we will go in depth into this. Okay, mas uh, lalaliman pa natin ang discussion. For, for now, gusto ko lang isipin nyo, ano nga bang investment para sa akin? Now, Based on asset classes, there are three types of investments. Three types of investments based on asset classes. One is cash or financial investments. The other is real assets. And the next is business assets. So business assets, yun yung either traditional or non-traditional business, pero whether traditional man or non-traditional, we make sure na meron tayong online presence or we can be able to operationalize our business online. Para kahit may mga unexpected incidences, katulad na itong lockdown, tuloy pa rin yung operation ng ating negosyo. Okay? Real assets. So, kasama dyan yung real properties, bahay at dupa. Ano pa pang real assets? Mga precious gems and stones, mga alahas. Uh, paintings na tumataas daw ang value, lalo na pagka wala na yung artist, di ba? And of course, there's cash or financial investment. So, yun yung mga time deposits, bonds, mutual funds, UITF, investment for, investment, bundled investments ng mga insurance, etc., etc. So, sa ating book study, we'll be dreading more of this. And particularly, we'll be exploring ways on how to participate in the Philippine stock market. Okay? Ayan. And in the course of our book study, we'll be venturing on some simple concepts na mahalaga. Simple yet very important. Katulad nitong 
rule of 72. The rule of 72 na made popular daw by Albert Einstein. So what does the rule of 72 say? The rule of 72, 72 states that you take the number 72, divide it by the interest rate na ibibigay sa'yo ng investment company na napili mo, will give you the number of years for your money to double. So again, you take the number 72, divide it by the interest rate, it will give you the number of years for your money to double. But to make it clearer, let's take this example. Halimbawa, you open a savings account in a bank. Meron kang gismil, 10,000 pesos. The bank uh, currently gives 0.25% per annum na interest rate. So, yun yung going rate for the top three commercial banks right now. So, the question is, gaano katagal siya bago dumoble o bago maging 20,000? Okay, yun yung tanong. So, we will use the rule of 72. So, sabi ng rule of 72, take the number 72, divide it by the interest rate. No need to convert sa fraction or decimal. So, plug it outright, 0.25 equals 288 years. So therefore, your money will double after 288 years. Para maging 20,000 yung 10,000. Matagal or super tagal? Masyadong matagal, ano? Baka hindi na tayo, wala na tayo sa mundo niyan after 288 years. Okay, so kanina pinag-usapan natin yung sabi natin, step 1 tsaka step 2. Step 1 is you save, pero before you save, kailangan meron kang positive cash flow. Then yung step two, you invest. Very good. So tingnan natin. When you save, you open a, let's say you open an account in a bank. So ang tawag sa'yo, depositor. Siyempre yung bank ko, i-re-invest na yan. Uh, being a business entity into government securities, commercial papers, stocks and equities, retail loans, pinapautang niya sa mga negosyo. In fact, ikaw, Pag inutang mo yung pera mo, eh di konti interest bigay sa'yo. Pero yung ipapataw na interest sa inutang mo, galing sa sarili mong pera, mas malaki na. Di ba? And pinapautang din nila uh, or they fund real estate uh, ventures or businesses. So let's say, kumita ng 12% in a year yung banko. Question, 12% din ba ang ibibigay sa'yo bilang depositor? Definitely not. So katulad nga ng example natin kanina, uh, going rate ng top 3 banks right now is only 0.25%. So sabihin na lang natin less than 1%. Siyempre may tax pa yan. Now, let's compare it with paano kaya kung investor ka. So as an investor, you open an investment in let's say a mutual fund company for this example. So sa mutual fund company na ito, hindi ka lang basta depositor, kundi shareholder ka or part owner or stakeholder ng investment company o mutual fund na ito. So katulad din ng banko, the mutual fund will now, will also invest or reinvest the pool funds, yung pinagsama-samang investment ng kanyang mga investors. So practically the same universe of investments, of course with some restrictions lang and regulations. So practically, let's say 12% in a year din ang kikitain niya. So hindi magkakalayo. Pero this time, 0.25% lang din bang ibibigay sa'yo bilang investor? Hindi. So kung ano yung kinita, 12% din. So kung 5,000 pesos ang investment mo, I did 5,000, 12% ng 5,000 pesos na yun. Kung 50,000 ang investment mo, 12% ng 50,000 na yun. Kung 5 million, so 12% ng 5 million na yun. And so on and so forth. And in some cases, katulad sa mutual fund, tax-free pa yan. So get the point? You see the picture? Sige, uh, please take time to digest. Okay, now, let's take a peek into the Philippine stock market. And 
Let's take a look how it works. So, ang Philippine stock market, parang, in a way, parang palengke din. Pero, of course, hindi mga paninda ang binibili mo, kundi yung mga publicly listed companies. So, companies like San Miguel, Jollibee, SM, GMA, ABS-CBN, Miralco, Globe, PLDT, SM Investments Corp, Ayala, Avoitis, BDO, Metrobank, and uh, more than 200 public publicly listed companies in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Bakit nag enlist ang mga company na ito sa Philippine Stock Market? O tama, to raise funds para sa business expansion. Dati, uh, there's a myth or some people say na pang mayaman lang yan. Hindi para sa akin yan. Well, uh, siguro dati totoo, pero right now, hindi na totoo yun. Kasi, for as low as 5,000 pesos, you can have access, own, and participate in the earnings potential of the biggest names in the stock market. Okay, so as low as 5,000. In fact, as even as we speak right now, merong mga investment opportunities in the Philippine stock market, katulad ng mutual funds, na 1,000 pesos lang. Makakapag-open ka na ng account. And in turn, participant ka na ng Philippine Stock Exchange to those investment vehicles. Okay? So, hindi lang siya pang mayaman. Para sa lahat na siya actually. Para sa'yo. Tingnan natin yung examples ng some of the publicly listed companies. So, one example is BDO. So, let's say you have 10,000 invested five years before 2018. Itong data ko kasi is July 2018. Anyway, for instructional purposes only. For you to, uh, for your appreciation lang. Okay? So, after five years, that's that July 2018, yung 10,000 na in-invest mo grew by 14.79% to become almost 20,000 or 19,930. So you see, yung 10,000 mo, dumoble, halos 20,000 in just 5 years. Unlike yung example natin kanina na 288 years. Hindi hamak na mas mabilis ito. Okay? So that's uh, one scenario na pwedeng mangyari sa investment mo in the stock market. So another one is, yan, sa Ayala Land. So the same uh, assumption, let's say 10,000 pesos, in-invest mo 5 years before July 2018, come July 2018, kumita siya ng 8.52%. Hindi kasi laki ng nauna natin example, pero gain pa rin. Diba? So yung 10,000 mo, naging mahigit 15,000 dahil nag-invest ka sa Ayala Land Inc. Ayan, here comes another company. Energy Development Corp. Nag-invest ka. Ganun pa rin. Uh, five years before July 2018, nag-invest ka ng 10,000. After five years, come July 2018, yan, hindi siya kumita. No? So, nalugi o bumaba ng 5.21%. So, yung 10,000 na investment mo after five years, naging 7,600. Okay? So, yun. Yun pala yung pwede mangyari sa stock market. Pwede tumaas, pwede bumaba, pwede gain, pwede loss. May risk. Pero what do you do with the risk? Do you avoid it? Siyempre, hindi. Diba? Kasi, come, kasi together with the risk comes the opportunity. If you avoid the risk, eh, you also avoid the opportunity. Diba? So ang gagawin natin, we manage it. Practically, the first step is through financial education, financial literacy. Kaya nga, pinag-uusapan natin ito at ginagawa natin itong uh, seven-part book study na ito. Okay? So, don't do so. Diba? Here comes Jollibee to the rescue. Uh, Ten years before July 2018, nag-invest ka ng 10,000. After five years, come July 2018, Kumita ng whopping 30.8%. So, yung 10,000 mo, halos naging times 4, halos naging 40,000. Or to be exact, 38,285. Okay? So, pag samasamahin mo yon yung examples natin kanina, di ba kahit may konting losses ka dun sa 
EDC or Energy Development Corp. Ang MEP, gain pa rin. Diba? So, that's another way how you can manage risk by di diversifying. Pero pinakamahalaga talaga para sa akin is yung st by studying it. Aral muna bago invest. Start with financial education. Kanina, we mentioned that uh, the value of your stocks in the Philippine stock market can go up and go down. So, dalawa lang ang pupuntaan. Go up and go down. When? Nobody knows when. Pero there are three scenarios naman that can happen. The first scenario is uh, this one. So, the, the straight line which is linearly increasing. So, dito, sa so month 1, pumasok ka sa, or bumili ka at sa price na 10 pesos per share. The following month, month 2, nag-increase yung price per share to 12. Month 3, tumaas uli or umakiyat uli yung presyo ng investment mo to 14 pesos per share. So, you're happy, right? Kasi tumataas ng tumataas ang investment mo until come month 6, yung sinumulan mo na 10 pesos per share, 20 pesos per share na. So, kumita ka? Hindi. Uh, definitely kumita kasi nagsimula ka ng 10, then if you will redeem sa month 6, di, you will sell at 20 pesos per share. So, definitely kumita ka rito. Scenario 1. Scenario 2, so the same, um, the same start, pumasok ka sa 10 pesos per share, pero this time, salip na umakiyat, bumaba, all the way to 7 pesos per share sa month 2, month 3, 5 pesos per share. Tapos, unti-unting nag-pick up all the way to month 6, pero hanggang 10 pesos per share lang. Balik doon sa pinagsimulan mo. So, others say na this is a break-even curve at mukhang hindi ka raw kikita. Diba? Kung baga break-even nga eh. Siguro, that's true if ang titingnan mo yung simula at dulo lang. Pero remember, katulad din sa pelikula, hindi simula at dulo lang ang panonoorin mo. Kasama yung gitna. And if you take the whole story into the account, it becomes different. Kasi this time, may opportunities na tayo dito to earn. Yes, you can, you can earn in a falling market. Take a look at scenario 3 naman. Kung natatakot ka sa 2, tingnan mo itong 3. So practically the same, you start at 10 pesos per share, pero naku yan, oh, biglang bumagsak sa month 2, sa 4 pesos per share, naging 2, naging 1, nung month 4, 1 peso per share. Until at month 6, nakarecover siya somewhere 4.5 pesos per share. So hindi na siya nakabalik sa 10. Definitely hindi na siya nakabawi. So, question, would you invest in this type of scenario in the Philippine stock market? Mahirap, ano? Parang nakakatakot. Pero what if I tell you that even in this type of scenario, katulad ng scenario that we are in right now, dahil meron tayong crisis, you can still, meron pa opportunity. Ayan, yun yung pag-aaralan natin towards part 6 and 7, yung lesson 6 and 7, which focuses on investments. But definitely, lahat ng scenario na yan, may opportunities. In fact, here's a... Uh, so, it, itong isang ano, ito, isang angle of it. Uh, there's a possibility that mas malaki pa ang kikinain mo sa kikitain mo sa scenario 3 kesa sa scenario 2 at kesa sa scenario 1. So, how? The clue is, take a look Take a look at this. Di ba habang bumababa, ano nangyayari sa price per share? Bumababa. Bumababa nga eh, di ba? So, what happens if meron kang pangbili, pero yung bibilihin mo, naging mura na? Tama yung iniisip mo. Mas marami kang mabibili. Okay? So, the same logic applies in the stock market. So, again, we'll talk more about that towards part 6 and 7 of this book study series. For now, Parang ano lang, uh, overview lang.
let's take a look at the current situation. Right now, we can say that many Filipinos are still seen as financially illiterate. Bakit? Ang dami pa rin victims that fall into scam. Hindi lang isang beses, kundi paulit-ulit. Diba? Kaya nga, in terms of educating a lot of Filipinos financially, marami pa tayong kailangan pagtulog-tulungan gawin. So another data that uh, we need to look on. Deposit interest rate from 1976, ang nakapture lang dito 2010, pero we can extrapolate it to 2020 naman. So remember, noong August 2018, ang deposit interest rate pa rin natin is less than 1%, actually 0.25% per year pa rin doon sa top commercial banks. While yung inflation, pumalo siya as high as 6%. Diba? Ito yung pag may sili ka raw, mayaman ka. Diba? Kasi nagmahal ng sobra ang sili noon. So take a look at this. Dito pa lang, kita mo na na medyo dihado ka sa laban. Kasi 1 minus 6 equals negative 5. So sa halit na kumikita yung pera mo sa banko, nalulugi pala siya ng negative 5% every year. Because of that thing that we call inflation. Tama. Ano ulit yung inflation? Yung pagtaas ng presyo ng bilihin or particularly yung paghina ng purchasing power ng iyong pera. Diba? For example, the same 100 pesos 10 years ago, noong 2010, mas marami siyang kayang bilhin yung 100 peso bill na yun kumpara sa kayang bilhin noong 100 pesos na yun ngayong araw na ito. Diba? Dati, malayo-layo ang marami-raming mabibili ang 100 pesos noong 2010. Eh. Pero ngayon, 100 pesos Tumabas ka ng bahay, pagbalik mo, ubos na. Ang pack, kulang pa nga. Diba? So, that's one reason why we need to invest. Kasi nga, pag hindi ka nag-invest, tinatalo ka year in, year out ng inflation. And when we talk about financial education, when we talk about financial literacy, it's not even an option. Do you know that it is mandated by law? Yes, RA 10.679 provides that kailangan daw itinuturo ang financial literacy among Filipino youth. Question, lahat ba ng institutions, educational institutions, offices, associations, cooperatives, merong financial literacy program? Hindi lahat. Merong ilan na meron pero hindi lahat definitely and uh, sa, ang problema kasi is may batas pero katulad din ng ibang batas hindi ganong kahigpit ang pagpapatupad. So another law is yung RA 10922 which states that every second week of November daw dapat celebrate yung economic and financial literacy week. At tanong, may nagsiselebrate ba ng financial literacy week? Meron siguro pero bihirang bihira. Kahit pa itinatakda siya ng batas, kukunti pa rin ang gumagawa. Kasi nga, hindi ganun kahigpit ang pagpapatupad. Sa ngayon. Pero eventually, as people begin to realize the importance of financial literacy, the importance of financial education, this will be slowly but surely strongly imposed. Lalo na sa mga lessons and realizations dito sa crisis na ito. Diba? Ang dami nating natutunan, especially the need to create emergency fund, and to have a backup source ng income. Ayan, so, we're almost done uh, dito sa part 1 ng ating book study series. So, let me introduce to you yung tinatawag natin na uh, solid financial foundation model or strong financial foundation model. Katulad din ng pagbubuo ng bahay, you build it from ground going up. Kailangan, Matiba yung bubong, pero dapat mas matiba yung foundation. Para may dumating na malakas na typhoon or earthquake, hindi siya basta-basta matutumba. Kung mahuna ang pundasyon, guguho ang bahay mo. Tama ba? Ganon din yung iyong financial foundation. Kailangan mas matibay sa bubong, which is the investment, yung foundation mo. Okay? Mamaya ipapakita natin kung ano yung components na. Kasi pag mahuna, Ang iyong financial foundation, magkaroon ng crisis, katulad din itong kinakaharap natin ngayon, 
mawala ng income, yung breadwinner ma-disable or worse, mag-pass away too soon, magkaroon ng filing update o lumalaking utang, then there'll be bankruptcy. And the whole financial foundation will collapse. Katulad din ng bahay na mahuna ang pundasyon. So we got to ensure that matibay na matibay yung foundation. And here's the model of building a strong financial foundation. Investment is good, pero bubong na yun eh. Kailangan bago ka makarating sa bubong, may mga preparasyon. So be sure meron kang emergency fund para katulad nitong panahon ngayon, hindi mo ma-withdraw prematurely or unnecessarily yung investment mo dahil meron kang emergency fund na iipon unti-unti para sa mga panahong katulad nito. You got to learn to manage your debts, you pay it off, zero, mas maganda. Kung, pero kung meron, maganda ma-manage natin until unti-unting maubos para hindi mo magagalaw yung investments mo. Kung wala kang emergency fund, ang magiging emergency fund mo utang. And of course, mahalaga ang life, konsepto ng life insurance and healthcare, lalo na ngayon. Nare-realize natin yan. Kasi nga, something happens to breadwinner, magpamaan ng virus or worse, mamatay, ay di ipapaanan na yung pamilya. Hold, provide for them. Diba? And again, katulad din ang pinagsimula natin ngayon, hindi libre ang mga yun. So make sure, positive ang cash flow. And how do you increase cash flow ulit? Very good. You increase or maximize the income and then you decrease the expenses. So, magdagdag ng pinagkakakitaan at the same time, magtipid or magbawas ng pinagkakagastusan. Okay? Ayan. So, with that, let's officially define. Ano nga ba yung pinag-uusapan natin na financial literacy? So, after venturing to all those uh, simple yet very important financial concepts, Yan, bigyan natin ng definition. Sabay-sabay nating padaanan or basahin. So, financial literacy is the dynamic interaction of knowledge, skills, and discipline in managing the money that you earn in order to create, protect, and preserve your wealth through a process that we call building a strong financial foundation. At tingnan natin yung mga mahahalagang components. Una, dynamic interaction or buhay na pag-uugnayan ng knowledge, kalaman, skills o yung application ng nalaman mo. Plus of course, yung discipline that will ensure the continuity of what you have started. Ayaw natin ng minas kubod lang. Yung nasimulan mo ngayon kasi na-excite ka lang o nakigaya ka lang pero hindi mo rin naman itutuloy. So mahalaga yung disiplina para matuloy-tuloy natin. Okay? So the other component is yung the stages of building wealth composed of creating it, yung creation. Siyempre, in order to grow money, you have to make money muna. Parang kailangan, para magkaroon ka ng punong kahoy, eh di dapat magtanim ka muna ng binhi. Diba? Then you protect it, you protect what you have planted, you protect what you earn, and then you preserve. Anong ibig sabihin ng preserve? O sabi nung iba, hindi mo raw madadala sa kabilang buhay ang pera. That's true. Pero maipapamana mo yan or maitatransfer. So yun yun, wealth transfer or asset transfer or asset preservation. So the three stages, you create, you protect, then you preserve. And then ang ating roadmap in doing this, the wealth building process, that what we call the building is strong financial foundation. Okay? So, let's pause for uh, about 5 seconds to absorb this. Kasi ito yung pinakabuod ng ating book study series. Question. Why is it important to learn about financial literacy? Kanina may mga nabangkit na tayong ilang mga dahilan pero to add to those mahalagang pag-aralan ng financial literacy because money is a limited resource. Thus, it has to be managed properly. Katulad din ng potable water o malinis na tubig na inumin akala natin dati hindi mauubos. In fact, many years ago 
pag sinabi mo na darating ang araw na ibobote or ibobote ang tubig at ibebenta, that would be a very absurd idea. Kung baga, kalokohan yun. Many years ago. Pero right now, nangyayari na yun, di ba? And in fact, pag hindi natin napangalagaang mabuti ang kalikasan, pati hangin, if ibobote or if ipapak na rin siya, then we have to buy fresh air. Di ba? So, katulad din ng money. It's a limited resource na kailangan nating i-manage ng tama. Okay? Another thing, although money is not the most important thing in life, it affects many important things in life. Hindi pera ang pinakamahalaga sa mundo, pero lahat ng mahalaga sa buhay mo, apektado ng pera. Tama ba? Isa pa, money without financial literacy is money soon gone. So kung napamanahan ka bigla ng malaking halaga, so biglang yaman o nanalo sa loto, so biglang tumas ang net worth, pero hindi sanay i-manage. So eventually, unti-unti ring mauubos kung hindi kaya i-manage ng tama. In fact, in some cases, in many cases, hindi nga unti-unti, bigla ding naubos. Easy come, easy go. Okay? So marami po bang natutunan sa book study series na ito dito sa lesson 1? Sige, so go, to summarize, uh, itong mga pinag-aaralan natin is the education part, pero let's make sure that we execute or apply what we learn in order to effect transformation. Para mag, may magbago o para magkaroon ng pagbabago, dapat yung natutunan sinasabuhay natin. Otherwise, what's the point of studying it? Remember, nothing happens until we apply what we have learned. And yan yung essence ng ating financially, financial literacy campaign dito sa IMD. And through the book, kayang-kaya nating, we believe, kayang-kaya nating isakatuparan o maabot yung ating mission of financially educating 10 million families by the year 2025. Because we believe financial education is not just for the wealthy, it's, it's for everyone. Para sa kahit anong estado mo sa buhay, Mabae, lalaki, mayaman, o hindi masyadong mayaman. Kahit sino ka, kahit anong profession mo, ang financial education ay para sa iyo. Pag sinabing everyone, eh, kasama ka doon. Diba? So, that ends our book study series for today. Ito po yung lesson 1 or part 1 ng 7 series. Samahin niyo po kami sa mga susunod na anim pa na book study series na handog sa inyo ng IMG. Sa IMG, ang ating mission is to create wealth for families. Ang ating battle cry as we try to reach the 10 million financially educated families by the year 2025 is no family left behind. Okay? For my, more info, you may visit my personal website, https colon double backslash 3408if.imgcorp.com Pwede nyo rin po akong hanapin sa Facebook, my Facebook account is Bads of Lena. Uh, karaniwan ng mga post ko is about financial literacy din naman. Okay? So once again, ako po si Bads of Lena, one of the financial educators and trainers ng IMG. Thank you for connecting today and listening to this live webinar. And magkita-kita po tayo dun sa mga susunod pang anim na series ng ating book study. Okay? Uh, ingat po kayong lahat. Thank you and God bless us all.